So hello fellow Earthlings. This is Earthling 64554637 And I think that rich people, successful people, famous people, I think that they should complain more about problems that they have in their lives. And yeah, I really do. Phil DeFranco, um, he's a YouTuber and he put out a little video about you know, different issues that he was dealing with in his life. And I think that people should do that some more. Now, I am Earthling, 6'4", yada, yada, yada. And feel free to uh, skip through this part if you've already heard it enough times. I have an MBA. I have a computer science bachelor's degree. I've been programming for the last 20 years. I have traveled around the world. I have repaired and transformed everything from uh, refrigerators, from washing machines, my own body, and more. And I also was a reservist in the army for a short period of time. So, uh, rich people and complaining more about their lives. I think that in globally, across the world, through history, we all think that money will solve our problems and that that is the highest goal to which we should um, aim. Of course, um, ostensibly, a number of us believe in uh, this spirituality kind of thing where we can develop ourselves and, and gain some kind of maturity, but I think that that's not real. I think most people aspire to having a higher income, to being wealthier, and just having more power and influence, and perhaps fame. And I think people who already have achieved that, they perpetuate that myth that life is indeed better. And I'm not saying that it's not better in some aspects. There are some aspects in which, clearly, if you had money to pay your rent and live in an area that had less crime, let's say, or where the weather was better, or job opportunities were better, or you had better access to medical care, definitely. There's some areas of your life where you say, hey, I, I am um, I'm a diabetic. I'm a type 1 diabetic. And there's nothing I can do about that. So it's good for me to have access to medical care. Or if you have asthma or some other chronic disease that you can't do anything about, then clearly, by having access to money, um, all things being equal, you're probably going to have a better quality of life. And your, your actual life is not going to be threatened your actual, some aspects of your happiness, maybe in terms of the entertainment that you have, maybe in terms of the quality of food that you have, you are going to have food that is unlikely to have harmful, let's say, let's say that you, you live in an area where it's runoff, polluted runoff from a river that's polluted, and you eat crops that come from land that's polluted like that which is the case in many places in Asia and around the world. But you don't have a choice. You can't move. If you had money and you could eat food and you could have clean water and so on, clearly that life is better. The problem is, though, that is that money cannot fix whether or not you are a sociable person, whether you have a lot of contacts with people and they like you and they respect you that is not something that money can fix at least di not directly you can't there's no like card that you can buy at wherever and use that card and suddenly people are going to like you people might like you because you spend money but they might not actually like you and that can be a problem, especially when you're aware that that's the case. Or even, let's say, you're an addict. 
if you have a lot of money, that means that, especially uh, if you are not yet completely addicted, you have the funds to buy as much drugs as you want. And yes, this is a better scenario because you don't have to rob people and that can be a danger to you. But at the same time, it means that all of the associated uh, problems that come from chronic drug use, you are more likely to have that. Whether it's cirrhosis of the liver, whether it is an increased likelihood of cancer, whether it's an increased likelihood potentially of strokes or whatever. So money isn't going to be helpful in that situation. I suppose you can always go to rehab, but you can always choose not to go to rehab just as well. My point is that when money fixes certain parts and even fame and attention um, and even power, when those things fix what they can fix, the other aspects of life can become more glaring and they can take up more of your mental attention. They might not be worse, they might not be life-threatening immediately, but they might certainly feel like they are bad. And I think that people who are influ in influential positions, they continue and, and they feel bad, as, as well they should, I suppose, about complaining about the bad things in their life. They feel bad about it because so many of their problems are not really the problems that other people have to deal with. But I feel that when rich and powerful people don't complain about their situation, it glorifies their situation to the extent that it keeps people wanting to be like them more than they potentially might if they really, really knew and understood what these rich people and powerful and influential people actually feel like. Because there are a lot of people who might see, but wait a minute, there is all of this attention, there is all of this jealousy, there is all of these people who are constantly coming, looking for money, there are people who might want to hurt me. There are people who might want to kidnap me. There are people who might want to kidnap my kids. And there's that constant worry about that, constant concern about that. And yet, because of the way that they only portray, like everyone else, only the best things in their life, there are so many people in society who, if they really knew what it was like, would probably settle for their position in life and be like, oh, okay, I don't really want to be like that at all. And I think that that would be helpful for society in general if there were many people who are destroying what they have in order to try to get something that they think is the solution to all of their problems. There are people who are putting, extending themselves out precariously, financially. They are leaving their social uh, relationships that help keep them mentally healthy by the wayside in a bid to achieve this wealth that in many ways they don't know that they already have in some ways. Because there are people who are very wealthy, who simply are wealthy because they don't spend a lot of money on a lot of different things. They keep that wealth, they retain that wealth, and actually even people like that, I suppose that uh, they could afford to change their lives because that is a group of wealthy people that many people never are aware of. There are millionaires who have been millionaires because they have modified how much they actually spend. But the millionaires that people aspire to be are the ones who spend 
all of this money on flashy things when they could probably stop working and retire and have stronger, better relationships with their families if they would just stop using all of that money just to portray a particular lifestyle that they have. And it's not necessary because this flashy car will get you to the same place that the boring looking car will get you to. And you can spend more time with your family and you can impart the important lessons onto your kids that you wouldn't be able to if you spent all of your time working so that you could buy them things that they don't need. In this video that Phil DeFranco put out, you know, it had a, a nice, nice background music. And he was talking in a nice, soothing voice about some of the issues that he was facing. He has two boys, I believe. They, they look really cute and they're nice. Um, he has a wife that, I don't know if he was joking or not, that he said that you know, they've been together for 29 years. I think it might have been a joke because I think he's like 35 or something. So, but in spite of that, the bad part of what he was saying was that he was binging and purging for the last year, the last year that we've been seeing him on YouTube. I can't imagine what purging is like, but... I've heard that it messes up your teeth. I've heard that it messes up your breath. I've heard that it can um, affect your alimentary canal, your, esoph your esophagus. I've heard that there are bad things, basically, about doing that. And um, it seems like it's a serious thing, especially if you... Like, you'd have to be pretty bad, it feels like, to be in a position where you're doing that and you're doing it so regularly that it's something that you can talk about. And here it is, you know, he wanted to introduce his youngest son and then he opens the door to this room where his son is sitting and it is a private movie theater. You can see that there is like a number of different seats inside of there that can recline and his son is in this private movie theater by himself watching something on TV. So that's a lot of, of money. And he's, he's joked before that he was worried that his kids might be some kind of trust fund kids. So here it is that Phil DeFranco, this guy that we see, is rolling in this cash. And yet he is dealing with things that would be considered very, very concerning if they were in somebody else who didn't have as much wealth as he did. And I'm really glad that he came out and mentioned it. And he said to everybody, you know, don't feel pity for me, but I just wanted other people to know that this is part of it. This is part of life. This is what I have to deal with. This is what I've had to deal with throughout my life. And, you know, I had a, a girlfriend and um, when I was dating her, she had more money or at least access to more money than I did. And I think she, I think um, what happened? She went to the garage where her car was, her car wouldn't start. And she it, she just called somebody. She called somebody to tow the car and that was the end of it. And I guess she took it to the mechanic and they would repair it and yada, yada, yada. But I never had that. I was all, that would have been a big, huge problem for me. But the result is that now I know how to fix relatively minor things. I can identify relatively minor things in cars with respect to like, you know, why doesn't a car start? I can say, well, maybe it's the gas, maybe it's spark plugs, maybe it's the starter, maybe it's the battery. I can understand those things. So I'm saying relatively minor. That's not really I'm making it seem like I don't know what I'm talking about, but I do. Anyway, 
my point at the end of the day is that people need to come out and be more honest so that all of us don't waste our time feeling jealous of other people and waste our lives and squander the things that we have trying to get things that are not worth it. And that's my point of view. And uh, feel free to like, subscribe, unlike, um, comment, disagree with me, agree with me, or any of the things that you would want somebody to do if this was a piece that you had made. Thanks. Peace.